everyone. Today I am going to tell you the history of New York City. I know it's a huge cliché to say that New York is one of the most exciting, interesting, vibrant places in the world, but to me this is uh, true and I have uh, very good memories associated with uh, New York City. I even find the New Yorkers rather uh, welcoming and friendly. I know that some people may disagree with that and maybe it's because I have spent a large part of my life in uh, Paris and being used to uh, Parisian uh, cafes and uh, taxi drivers my definition of friendly may not be very demanding but uh, anyway this is a place I like a lot and I would like to share a bit of knowledge about it with you today. As usual, our story is going to start quite uh, long ago, in the 16th century. The site where New York is built had been uh, occupied by uh, Indians for centuries before that, especially uh, Algonquin and uh, Lenape Indians, but only uh, from the 16th century do we have a documented history of uh, this uh, site and the creation of New York City. The site itself was uh, discovered by an Italian navigator, Verrazzano. There is a uh, bridge named after him in New York City today. And this uh, Italian navigator I talked about at the beginning of the video about New France because he had been sent to North America by the King of France in the hope of uh, discovering another route towards uh, Asia. And before exploring a little bit the Bay of the St. Lawrence, he uh, discovered this site where New York would be built later and named it a New Angoulême after the French city of Angoulême from which the King of France was uh, coming. However, no uh, settlement was uh, established and it is only a few uh, decades later that uh, settlers coming from Europe would uh, come to the site of New York and uh, create a city. This happened at the beginning of the 17th century and the first uh, city to be built on the site of New York on the island of Manhattan um, was uh, founded by Dutch settlers. In the first uh, decades of the 17th century, the Dutch were fighting against Spain for their uh, independence, but uh, despite the war, they had a very uh, powerful fleet and uh, good uh, navigators that had started to uh, explore the world a bit more than a century after um, the Spaniards and uh, the Portuguese and 
they uh, established colonies in uh, the Americas and in uh, Asia too and uh, as uh, a part of this expansion policy the Dutch Indian uh, East Indian Company had uh, recruited an English navigator Henry Hudson to uh, try and discover another route towards uh, India and uh, Asia through uh, North America. We know today that it is uh, impossible uh, or it was impossible to go to uh, Asia by boat uh, sailing west from uh, Europe. It has become possible only with the creation of the Panama Canal, but there was this uh, belief in uh, Europe in the 16th and 17th century that maybe uh, a passage existed and uh, the French had been uh, looking for it at uh, the level of the Saint Lawrence which gave birth to the first uh, French settlements in uh, Canada whereas uh, the Dutch and uh, the English too were looking for it more north of that which led uh, to the discovery of the uh, Hudson Bay named after the same uh, Henry Hudson that was uh, recruited and sent by the Dutch East India Company. So in uh, the first uh, decades of the 17th century, the Dutch uh, created the first colony of very uh, limited uh, dimensions with uh, a few hundred persons on the uh, island of Manhattan. Some of them started to uh, cultivate the land on Manhattan and what would uh, become Brooklyn uh, long uh, after. The population of this uh, first colony was coming from uh, the Netherlands, but not only. There were uh, Walloons too, from what uh, is now Belgium today. A few uh, English, a few uh, French, and slaves too, coming from uh, Africa, who played a, a very important role in uh, developing this uh, colony. The first slaves arrived in uh, 1628, just uh, four years after this small colony or trading post had been uh, established. The uh, island of Manhattan was uh, boat in a sense to the uh, Native uh, Americans who lived um, on the site by the Dutch for uh, nothing uh, compared with uh, what it is worth uh, today and this uh, colony started to uh, grow benefiting from the very uh, attractive strategic strategic position of this uh, colony because it was uh, located at the uh, arrival of the Hudson River to the uh, Atlantic connecting the site with uh, inland and uh, inland territories and uh, the fur uh, trade that could be made 
with the uh, Indians and the Bay of New York to uh, offer uh, protection from the high sea which made uh, New York an excellent uh, site to uh, develop um, trade and to uh, uh, install a, a settlement. However, uh, the city was not called uh, New York, it was called New Amsterdam because it had been uh, created by the Dutch and uh, for a few uh, decades it would uh, slowly grow um, under the supervision of uh, Dutch governors. The most famous of these uh, governors who uh, arrived in uh, New Amsterdam in 1647 is uh, probably uh, Peter Stuyvesant who uh, put the colony a bit more uh, in order and uh, ruled it uh, more uh, strictly allowing the, the colony where only uh, 1,500 persons lived to uh, start growing a bit uh, faster. However, uh, this uh, colony was quickly exposed to the war, the rivalry between uh, England and uh, the Netherlands. There was a uh, strong, uh, fierce competition between these two uh, countries to uh, dominate the sea in the 17th century and ultimately uh, the English would uh, manage to uh, uh, win the wars with uh, uh, the Netherlands and uh, establish uh, naval supremacy and because of these uh, wars the control of uh, New Amsterdam went to uh, the English in 1664 the colony was uh, sacked by uh, an English uh, fleet and when the peace was signed um, the colony became an English uh, city or settlement. The city was uh, briefly recaptured uh, by the Dutch in 1673 during another war with uh, England, but it was quickly uh, reconquered and uh, finally uh, lost to the English in 1674. In 1674, uh, after this uh, reconquest of uh, New Amsterdam by the English, it was renamed New York in honor of the Duke of York, who was a brother of the, of the English King Charles II. Stuyvesant, uh, the uh, ex-governor, uh, retired but stayed on the site and uh, from that moment on New York uh, became an English colony for uh, a bit more than a century. Under uh, British rule New York continued to grow and by uh, the first years of the 18th century, about uh, 75 years after it had been uh, founded, the population reached uh, 5,000 persons and the uh, appearance of uh, New York, its uh, economic activity
positivity started to uh, change. New York had been a uh, trading post first, where people uh, cultivated the land essentially to uh, produce their own food. But from the beginning of the 18th century, the main uh, activity, the main industry in uh, New York became uh, milling. The grain was uh, processed, ground in uh, windmills and uh, exported to uh, the West Indies in particular, with which uh, New York developed trade uh, relations. And uh, as the city continued its uh, steady growth in the, uh, the 18th century, it became one of the most important cities in uh, the British colonies in uh, North America. Not the most important one, Philadelphia was a, a bigger uh, city, but however, when the uh, American Revolution started um, in the years 1770s, the population of New York was uh, 25,000 people, and uh, not only Manhattan was uh, populated, the other boroughs of uh, modern-day New York had been uh, used as uh, settlements. Uh, first, uh, Brooklyn, as I mentioned before, but also Harlem, where uh, Dutch settlers before the city was uh, transferred to uh, Britain had created a, another small settlement called New Harlem after uh, the Dutch city of the same name. Uh, the Bronx, too, in the name the Bronx is coming from a uh, Swedish settler called Bronk, who had uh, settled in uh, what would become the Bronx uh, later, and uh, Staten Island, a name of uh, Dutch origin too, was uh, populated as well. But uh, Manhattan remained the main uh, um, place for uh, population, and in order to uh, protect the site, a wall was uh, built, cutting the south part of Manhattan from the northern part of the island, which had not been populated yet, and the street passing uh, nearby was called Wall Street. Um, at first it was uh, not a uh, uh, financial uh, center, it would become one uh, later, after the uh, independence, but uh, from this time uh, comes the name Wall Street. So when uh, the uh, American Revolution started, New York, uh, of course, was a strategic city uh, to control, and contrary uh, to other uh, American cities, it was uh, controlled by the British during most of the uh, independence war was uh, occupied until the uh, end of the war and became uh, American only um, in, seven, in 1783 when uh, peace was signed and the uh, independence of the uh, United States 
recognized um, by uh, England and uh, other uh, European countries. Of course, because of its uh, size, uh, New York was uh, one of the most important uh, cities in the newly born United States, but not um, the most important one, and uh, not the capital city either, except for a short uh, period of time. It is in the 19th century that New York would uh, really uh, explode, uh, grow incredibly fast, and uh, become the main uh, metropolis in uh, North America. A few uh, decades after the independence, in uh, 1820, New York became uh, the largest uh, city with more than uh, 100,000 inhabitants and this uh, tremendous growth continued. Uh, in 1840 there were 300,000 inhabitants, in 1860 800,000 and by the beginning of the 20th century much more than one million. This uh, growth was made possible by the uh, interest of the site. As I said, New York was a uh, connecting point between uh, the ocean and uh, inland uh, territories by the uh, space available around uh, the island of Manhattan and also by uh, a reorganization of the city that uh, took place in the 19th century. The development of what was uh, a few decades before a colony was uh, becoming uh, a bit chaotic and uh, disorganized so that uh, the governor of the state of New York appointed a commission to create a plan in uh, the first years of the 19th century and this led in 1811 to the uh, adoption of the grid pattern uh, based on which the city of New York, and especially uh, Manhattan, would be um, urbanized. In the 19th century, uh, New York became also the uh, entry gate, or the most important uh, gate, to uh, North America for the migrants uh, that, for a large part, of them came from uh, Europe, but slaves continued to uh, arrive too in the first half of the 19th century, and there was uh, always a very significant black minority living in New York, and uh, the city in the 19th century transformed itself uh, dramatically as one of the centers of the nascent industrial revolution in uh, America. What really made uh, the uh, industrial fortune of New York would be the development of uh, railways, which progressively turned New York City into the main uh, trade node in uh, the United States and the uh, entry gate to, um, the, uh, to this market uh, for um, imports. At the beginning of the 19th century, 
New York was not uh, the most important uh, port in the uh, US, but by the end of the century, almost two thirds of the uh, imports entering the US territory uh, transited through uh, New York and uh, almost one third of all exports by the uh, US uh, also uh, lived the territory um, transiting through uh, New York. This uh, growth um, of the uh, industry turned uh, New York into one of the biggest industrial centers uh, by the end of the uh, 19th century and in uh, parallel a very uh, powerful financial center also uh, developed contributing to uh, the wealth of uh, New York even though like every big city in the world uh, in the past like uh, today New York has always been a place where, where uh, incredibly high wealth was uh, living near uh, extreme poverty and uh, the social history of New York is also made of uh, a lot of tensions um, in the 19th century with uh, the appearance of uh, strikes of workers, um, the strong uh, opposition between uh, minorities uh, that were uh, flowing constantly coming from uh, Europe, the uh, Italians, the Germans, the uh, Irish and also uh, the black uh, African slaves that uh, continued to uh, arrive there were uh, riots regularly and uh, actually the history of New York has never been a history of uh, a peaceful and uh, tranquilous city maybe uh, it is uh, more peaceful than ever uh, today because it has always been uh, a place of uh, political, social um, uh, and even uh, economic uh, tensions. However, uh, by the end of the 19th century, New York had become one of the first uh, modern cities in the world. It had gained uh, an electricity supply in the 1880s. It had gained uh, telephone lines too. It was uh, connected to the country by uh, railways and it uh, quickly adopted many uh, innovations coming from Europe like uh, for example the first uh, department stores that appeared uh, in uh, New York City shortly after Paris and London names like uh, Massey's or Bloomingdale's have been uh, in uh, New York City for uh, more than one century and a half now. Many uh, cultural institutions also uh, appeared in the 19th century. The big uh, libraries, uh, museums uh, were uh, founded uh, at this time. Very famous newspapers were also created in uh, New York City, like the New York Times uh, in 1851, I think, and uh, the Wall Street Journal uh, a few years before the end of the 19th century. They still exist today and are uh, references 
in the press and uh, the uh, immigration was also uh, organized by the end of the 19th century with the uh, opening of the uh, United States immigration station on uh, Ellis Island and through this uh, station transited uh, millions, I think almost uh, 20 millions immigrants uh, coming uh, mainly from Europe so that when the 20th century started New York had uh, established itself as the uh, economic capital city of uh, the United States and also its uh, prominent cultural and, and uh, demographic city. The um, appearance of Broadway also um, and its uh, fame as a uh, place for uh, entertainment with uh, theaters and uh, musicals also uh, took root by the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th century but um, in the first years of the 20th century New York was uh, really uh, becoming not only the prominent city in the uh, US but also one of the prominent cities in the uh, entire world it was um, incredibly uh, modern opened to uh, innovations for example uh, the cinema industry uh, even in the US started in uh, New York City and it remained uh, New York remained uh, a big uh, center for the production of movies um, until uh, Los Angeles really uh, uh, dominated this uh, industry in the second half of the 20th uh, century it was also uh, and this is very important for the uh, appearance of New York and especially Manhattan today the place where uh, the first skyscrapers uh, were built and uh, the building of these uh, skyscrapers was a consequence of probably uh, two things one uh, the lack of space on Manhattan that had been uh, entirely uh, urbanized for several decades already when the 20th century began and also uh, the uh, appearance of very uh, powerful companies and very uh, impressive uh, wealthy uh, dynasties uh, made possible by the fast industrial growth um, of the uh, United States who wanted to show their uh, power and their influence through uh, architecture something that took a different form in uh, New York City but is not new uh, to uh, history since uh, be it uh, in Europe or in uh, China or uh, if we go back in the past even to the uh, antiquity uh, using uh, architecture as a manifesto of your uh, power is something uh, very common in the history of men Manhattan was the, the place um, for uh, this uh, innovation and uh, by the very end of the 19th century in uh, 1898 the five boroughs that uh, constitute New York uh, today were gathered under a single municipal government the five 
boroughs being uh, Manhattan, uh, Brooklyn, Queens, uh, the Bronx, and uh, Staten Island. So that uh, with all these uh, boroughs together, New York had more than 3 million inhabitants um, when the, the 20th uh, century started and uh, the transformation of the uh, appearance of New York started with this uh, first uh, skyscrapers that uh, appeared before the First World War. The Flatiron building which is on uh, Broadway and uh, one of the well-known uh, sites in uh, New York City is uh, was built in uh, 1902 it has uh, more than one century now another uh, famous early uh, skyscraper is the Woolworth building built built in a neo gothic uh, style that uh, like the flight iron building is uh, protected today as a uh, national uh, landscape and uh, some of the most uh, emblematic uh, skyscrapers uh, appeared in the 1920s and 1930s such as the uh, Chrysler and building and uh, probably the most famous one the uh, Empire State building that was uh, built at the beginning of the 1930s I forgot to uh, talk about two things uh, the uh, creation of Central Park if we uh, come back a few uh, decades before that was uh, decided also in this move to modernize New York City and uh, give it a large park like uh, Paris and London were uh, doing with uh, Hyde Park in London or the Bois de Boulogne in uh, Paris and also uh, uh, maybe the symbol of uh, New York the Statue of Liberty which was erected uh, in the 1880s uh, officially as a gift of France to uh, the United States even though it was actually uh, for a part funded by uh, uh, the Americans uh, themselves and uh, by the middle of the 20th uh, century New York had become without any uh, doubt uh, the leading uh, city in the world the most uh, influential one after the uh, US uh, exited the Second World War victorious it became uh, the symbol of the, the melting pot and one of the most uh, probably even the most um, cosmopolitan city uh, in the world the following decades would be uh, tougher for uh, New York it always remained a uh, prominent cultural and economic uh, center but faced with a, uh, an economic decline uh, in the, the 60s and uh, the 70s and uh, the development of uh, poverty New York became uh, an increasingly dangerous place and many consider the 1970s and the early 1920s to be a low point in the history of New York when uh, the city started to stagnate demographically and economically 
and gained a relatively poor reputation as a uh, dangerous place. But this uh, improved dramatically in the past 30 years, first with uh, an economic revival, uh, with uh, for the better or the worse, the tremendous growth of the uh, financial industry that created uh, many more jobs. Uh, New York also uh, retained uh, a very central place in uh, the publicity industry. It remained uh, an important uh, port for trade. It became uh, uh, one uh, uh, important uh, tourist uh, destination too. It benefited from uh, its uh, international uh, dimension. Uh, the United Nations were uh, installed in uh, New York City um, and uh, due to uh, more efficient uh, security policies by the local uh, government the situation improved much including in the poorest parts of New York like uh, the Bronx uh, since then these uh, parts of uh, New York may uh, remain relatively uh, poor and uh, dangerous to the uh, outsiders but uh, this has nothing to see with what it could be uh, in the 1970s and uh, by the very end of the 20th century with the collapse of the uh, communist world at least uh, the Soviet Union and uh, Eastern Europe with uh, the uh, economic revival of the uh, United States New York was like uh, the symbol of uh, the triumph of the uh, US and uh, Western uh, of the Western world in general and maybe for that uh, very uh, reason the worst tragedy that uh, hit New York in its uh, history happened with the September 11 um, terrorist uh, attacks on the, the World Trade Center and I uh, think every one of us uh, probably uh, remembers what uh, he was doing when uh, this uh, terrible tragedy was um, announced However, uh, New York managed to uh, overcome this uh, tragedy and uh, rebuild the site where uh, the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center and uh, the complex around that were uh, entirely uh, destroyed once were. And uh, despite this uh, wound, New York has uh, continued to evolve nicely, I think, in the past uh, decade. The population has never been uh, that important. Officially, there is uh, 8.3 million inhabitants in New York. But in fact, New York is the center of uh, a large urbanized area with more than 20 million uh, people and uh, I would like uh, more cities in the world to be as uh, open, as uh, diverse, as uh, um, innovative and uh, fun as New York City. This is uh, all for uh, today. I hope you uh, enjoyed the story and I hope to uh, see you soon my friends. You can uh, still vote for 
one of the next topics you would like me to talk about. I posted that in the video called uh, Asian Objects Review. And uh, I will close the votes in a few days on uh, February the 10th. I hope to uh, see you there.